Let us consider a system bounded at both the ends, such as a stretched string fixed at both the ends. Let us generate a continuous sinusoidal wave of a certain frequency moving to the right. This wave can be represented by y1 of x t is equal to a sine kx minus omega t. Let this be equation 1. This wave on reaching the right end gets reflected and travels to the left. This reflected wave can be represented by y2 of xt is equal to a sine kx plus omega t. Let this be equation 2. The reflected wave on reaching the left end gets reflected again and travels to the right. This process of reflection continues endlessly. At any point x and at any time t, there are always two overlapping waves, one moving to the right and the other moving to the left. By superimposition of waves 1 and 2, we get a combined wave which can be represented by y of x t is equal to y1 of x t plus y2 of x t. Let this be equation 3. On substituting 1 and 2 in equation 3, we get y of x t is equal to a sine k x minus omega t plus a sine k x plus omega t. This equation can be written as y of x t is equal to 2a into sine k x into cos omega t. Let this be equation 4. In equation 4, 2a into sine k x represents the amplitude of oscillations of an element of the string located at position x. Note that this amplitude changes with x. Whereas, in a traveling wave, the amplitude of the wave is the same for all the elements of the string. Therefore, equation 4 represents a standing wave and not a traveling wave. Let us now find the positions of the elements of the stretched string where the amplitude of the standing wave is zero. The standing wave is represented by y of x t is equal to 2a into sine k x into cos omega t. For amplitude to be zero, 2a into sine k x has to be equal to zero. Let this be equation 1. As a cannot be zero, sine kx has to be equal to zero. This means kx is equal to n into pi. Let this be equation 2. And the values of n are equal to zero, 1, 2 and so on. We know that k is equal to 2 pi by lambda. Substituting k is equal to 2 pi by lambda in equation 2. We get x is equal to n lambda by 2 for n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on.
X gives the positions of zero amplitude of the resultant standing wave. The positions of zero amplitude are called nodes. The distance between any two consecutive nodes is lambda by 2. Now, let us find the position of the elements of the stretched string, where the amplitude of the standing wave is maximum. The standing wave is represented by y of xt is equal to 2a into sine kx into cos omega t. Amplitude is equal to 2a into sine kx. When mod sine kx is equal to 1, the maximum possible amplitude is 2a. For mod of sine kx is equal to 0, kx is equal to n plus 1 by 2 into pi. For n is equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on, we know that k is equal to 2 pi by lambda. Substituting the value of k in the above equation, we get 2 pi by lambda into x is equal to n plus 1 by 2 into pi. By rearranging the above equation, we get x is equal to n plus 1 by 2 into lambda by 2. For n is equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on. Let this be equation 1. Equation 1 gives the position of maximum amplitude of the resultant standing wave. These positions are called the antinodes. The distance between two consecutive antinodes is lambda by 2. They are located midway between two consecutive nodes. We will now discuss harmonics. Let us consider a stretched string that is fixed at both ends and plucked to generate a wave. Nodes are produced at both the fixed ends. If the left end of the string is taken as the origin, then for the right end x is equal to L, where L is the length of the string. For the right end to be a node, the length L is equal to n into lambda by 2. For n is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. On rearranging the above equation, we get lambda is equal to 2L by n. For n is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. Let this be equation 1. Equation 1 shows that the standing waves on a string of length L have restricted wavelength. We know that the velocity of the wave V is equal to lambda into nu. Where nu is the frequency of the wave V is the velocity of the wave and lambda is the wavelength. On rearranging the above equation, we get nu is equal to V by lambda. Let this be equation 2. Substituting equation 1 in 2, we get nu is equal to V by 2L by N.
By simplifying this equation, we get nu is equal to n into v by 2l. For n is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. Let this be equation 3. Equation 3 gives the natural frequencies or the modes of the oscillations of the system. The natural frequencies of a string are integral multiples of the lowest frequency. When n is equal to 1, nu is equal to v by 2l, which is the lowest frequency. The oscillation mode with this lowest frequency is called the fundamental mode or the first harmonic. By taking the values of n equal to 2, 3 and so on, we obtain the second harmonic, third harmonic and so on. The frequencies associated with these modes are denoted as nu 2, nu 3 etc. The collection of all possible modes is called the harmonic series and n is called a harmonic number. A stretched string fixed at both ends can vibrate simultaneously in more than one mode. The mode that is strongly excited depends on where the string is plucked or bored. Musical instruments like the sitar, violin etc. use this principle to produce music. Let us now study the modes of vibration of a system which is closed at one end and free at the other. The air column in a glass tube partially filled with water is an example of such a system. Vibrations are produced at the open end of the tube with a tuning fork which travel through the air column in the tube to the water surface and get reflected. This is similar to the reflection of waves in a string that is fixed to a ring and the ring runs up and down the rod without friction. These two waves traveling in opposite directions are in phase. We get an antinode at the open end of the pipe. Let the length of the air column be equal to L. The position of the antinode is expressed as x is equal to n plus 1 by 2 into lambda by 2. Let this be equation 1. For n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on represents the positions of the antinodes. Substituting x is equal to l in equation 1. We get L is equal to N plus 1 by 2 into lambda by 2 for N is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. By rearranging the above equation, we get lambda is equal to 2L by N plus 1 by 2 for N is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. Let this be equation 2. Equation 2 gives the modes which are sustained in the air column. We know that V is equal to lambda into nu and by rearranging nu is equal to V by lambda. Let this be equation 3. 
substituting 2 in 3, we get frequency nu is equal to V by 2 L by N plus 1 by 2. On rearranging the above equation, we get nu is equal to N plus 1 by 2 into V by 2 L. For N is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. Let this be equation 4. Taking n is equal to 0, fundamental frequency nu is equal to v by 4l. Taking n is equal to 1, 2, 3, we get odd harmonics of the fundamental frequency. That is, 3v by 4l, 5v by 4l, and so on. The air column open at one end resonates with frequencies denoted by equation 4. When a pipe is open at both ends, there will be antinodes at both ends and all harmonics will be generated. This can be compared to waves produced in a string that is fixed with rings looped to rods at both ends. When a listener hears two sounds of very close frequencies, one after the other with a short time gap, he has to differentiate between them. When both these sounds reach the listener simultaneously, what he hears is the sound of average frequency of the two combined frequencies. The intensity of the sound increases and decreases in slow wavering beats. Which have a frequency that exhibits the difference between the two original frequencies. The intensity of the sound wave depends on its amplitude. This phenomenon of wavering of sound intensity, when two waves of nearly the same frequencies and amplitudes propagating in the same direction are superposed on each other, is called beats. Let us understand this phenomenon of beats more clearly with the help of a numerical example. Let the frequency of the first sound wave, nu1, be 256 hertz. And the frequency of the second sound wave, nu2, be 260 hertz. The average frequency of the sound wave heard by the man is equal to 258 hertz. The frequency of the beat, expressed as new beat, is equal to the difference between new 1 and new 2. On substituting the values of new 1 and new 2 and calculating, we get the value of new beat is equal to 4 hertz. Let us place these observations into a mathematical expression.
waves 1 and 2 have the same amplitude and phase. The angular frequency of the first wave is greater than the second wave. S1 and S2 are the displacements of a particle from its mean position due to waves 1 and 2 respectively in the x direction at a particular location and time. According to the principle of superposition of waves, S is equal to S1 plus S2. S is the resultant displacement of the particles at a point due to the two waves. Let this be equation 1. We know that S1 is equal to A cos omega 1 into T. And S2 is equal to A cos omega 2 into T. Substituting the values of S1 and S2 in equation 1. We get S is equal to A into cos omega 1 into T plus cos omega 2 into T. This can be written as 2A cos omega 1 minus omega 2 into T by 2 into cos omega 1 plus omega 2 into T by 2. Let this be equation 2. S can be written as A cos omega T. Where the amplitude A of the resultant wave is equal to 2A cos omega 1 minus omega 2 into T by 2. And the angular frequency of the resultant wave omega is equal to omega 1 plus omega 2 by 2. Let this be equation 3. In the equation for amplitude A, of the resultant wave, the values A omega 1 and omega 2 are constant. As the value of T keeps changing, the value of the cos function also changes. Therefore, the amplitude of the resultant wave is not a constant. This varying amplitude of the resultant wave gives rise to beats. Since the resultant wave is a cosine function, it has maximum amplitude when cos of omega 1 minus omega 2 by 2 into t is equal to plus or minus 1. This implies omega 1 minus omega 2 by 2 into t is equal to k into pi. Where k is equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on. From the above equation, t is equal to 2 into k into pi by omega 1 minus omega 2. Substituting the values of k equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on in the equation for t, we get t is equal to 0, 2 pi by omega 1 minus omega 2, 4 pi by omega 1 minus omega 2 and so on.
the time interval between any two consecutive maximum values of amplitude gives the beat period T beat of the resultant wave. Therefore, T beat is equal to 2 pi omega 1 minus omega 2. We know that frequency is equal to 1 by time period. Therefore, beat frequency, new beat, is equal to 1 by T beat. Therefore, by substituting the value of T beat in the above equation, we get new beat is equal to omega 1 minus omega 2 by 2 pi. Let this be equation 4. We know that omega 1 is equal to 2 pi nu 1. And omega 2 is equal to 2 pi nu 2. Where nu 1 and nu 2 are the frequencies of waves 1 and 2 respectively. Substituting these values in equation 4 and simplifying, we get new beat is equal to new 1 minus new 2. Similarly, let's calculate the beat frequency when the amplitude of the resultant wave is 0. Amplitude A is minimum when cos omega 1 minus cos omega 2 by 2 into t is equal to 0. This implies that omega 1 minus omega 2 by 2 into t is equal to 2k plus 1 into pi by 2. Where k is equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on. From the above equation, t is equal to 2k plus 1 into pi by omega 1 minus omega 2. Substituting the values of k is equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on in the equation for t. We get t equal to pi by omega 1 minus omega 2. 3 pi by omega 1 minus omega 2. 5 pi by omega 1 minus omega 2 and so on. Beat period. T beat is the difference between two consecutive values of T. Therefore, T beat is equal to 2 pi by omega 1 minus omega 2. Therefore, beat frequency, new beat, is equal to 1 by T beat, which is equal to omega 1 minus omega 2 by 2 pi. Substituting and simplifying the values of omega 1 and omega 2 in the above equation. We get new beat is equal to new 1 minus new 2. Therefore, the beat frequency, new beat, when amplitude is maximum or minimum, is the difference between new 1 and new 2. Musicians use the beat phenomena to tune their instruments. The musical instrument is sounded against a standard frequency and tuned until the beat disappears.